Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, today we're gonna talk about the IAM rules. Uh, this is going to be uh, one of the most important topic and uh, uh, service that we're gonna discuss in the AWS. Uh, one need to understand the IAM rules and how it works uh, pretty clearly because uh, this is uh, something that you would interact with on day-to-day -day basis if you're using an AWS or if you're going to audit AWS, uh, uh, so if you're a pen tester or something, you need to understand this IAM rules very, very uh, clearly. Now, I do recommend one of the things, this is a little bit a complex topic, so I would highly recommend if you guys can try this out by yourself as well. Uh, there is a, AWS offers a free account, so you can create a, sign up for a free account uh, with your email address, and uh, for, uh, as long as you're using it within the free tier, uh, you guys should not have any issue and the things that we are doing so far does should not incur that much traffic anyway So you guys should be fine uh, with that uh, So and, and that's actually uh, AWS is providing that free account for the learning purposes So I would say uh, take benefit of it and, and try to exercise things that we have learned so far uh, yourself as well All right, so uh, what are the IAM roles? So the IAM roles are the temporary security credentials in AWS managed by secure token service. So this SDS uh, is, uh, is a service which provides a temporary security credentials, uh, uh, which are considered as a roles. Now an entity can assume the specific permission defined by the role. Now, uh, when we talk about the entity, uh, it could be EC2, it could be S3, it could be a Lambda, so, uh, and any user account, uh, like you know which need temporary access can use the IAM roles to get the access and SDS uh, pretty much manages that uh, particular access now if you have to understand the uh, SDS in detail as well so SDS is the management of temporary security credentials now this is not something that uh, you would have to worry about uh, SDS is pretty smart service and it does all these things in the back end but uh, uh, just to give you some understanding, so you can create a granular access. So of course you can have a policy which would say access should only be granted for 15 minutes or one hour or two hours. So you can uh, change the duration uh, as per your policy. Now, uh, one advantage, uh, actually not one, there are many advantage, but so uh, one of the thing is credentials are not stored with the user or service granted temporary access. Instead, token attached to the access request. Now, let me give you a uh, like you know good example. If you want to give an access uh, to uh, one of the service, uh, let's say S3, uh, uh, to uh, uh, so and so other entity or so and so user, you do not have to kind of create a user role for each of that service. So you do not if there are ten users who are using that. A particular service you do not have to uh, create like you know the read-only access if you all of all all of those 10 users need a read-only access you do not have to create an individual access what you can do is you can create a role attached to that particular entity or service and then those users will by default have that particular role we'll see that in console as well to make it a little bit more clear but i just want to give an example right now now so what's the benefit of uh, having the like you know i am roles instead of uh, doing like a user credentials like username and password or something like that so there is a low risk of credentials being exposed because you are not using any credentials uh, this is uh, going to be secure because there is no way someone could hack or can get the credentials you don't need to create the IAM identities for every user uh, this already we talked about the example that I gave a little bit uh, just before and because they're temporary, it doesn't need to be rotated. Now for the password, uh, we always thought like, you know, we need to rotate the password policy. We need to make sure the passwords are rotated every 60 or 90 days. There's no nothing to worry about because these are just temporary access, like a one hour access that you cannot get. And if you need uh, another access, then uh, of course, STS will do that in backend. But as long as the user is valid in the system, he's gonna get the temporary access token. Now, one thing to note, STS uses a single endpoint, which is sts.amazon.com. It's residing in US East 1, which is a Northern Virginia uh, region. 
but to avoid latency, uh, what you can do is you can point your APIs to use whatever the region is closest to you. Uh, so that way you can make sure you're not getting, uh, your customer is not getting that latency while authenticating. So uh, next thing we uh, see uh, is the roles with the AWS services. Now we talked about what are the IAM roles. Now IAM roles have multiple, uh, when, you, when you're actually going to configure, there are multiple options. And one of the option is uh, like, you know, roles within the AWS services. Now roles must be used because policies cannot be directly attached to the AWS services and services can only have one role attached at a time. So if you have uh, like, you know, um, multiple role, or sorry, multiple policy you want to attach, you can attach multiple policies to a role and then role will have one-to-one -one relationship with the services. Again, we'll see that in the demonstration. So don't worry if that doesn't make sense right now. Now you should never store credentials in AC2 instance. So instead uh, use a uh, user role. Uh, I think we did discuss that in one of the previous uh, video about the best practices. Uh, this is just a reiteration of that. Now let's take a scenario example and, and we'll try to implement that onto our AWS console. Our EC2 instance wanted to read the data from S3. So what we would have to do is the instance assume a role with S3 read only permission from IAM. And then, of course, the EC2 uh, can then read objects from buckets specified in the role. Uh, so let's let's go back. Uh, let's go to our AWS console and then see how it is actually done. Uh, so, all right. So this is our AWS console, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the IAM. And then I'll go to the roles. And here you can see there are some resources here as well, but you can create a role here. Uh, there are a few other options which we'll talk in a moment, uh, but right now our focus is on the AWS services such as AC2, Lambda and others. So let's, because uh, in our example, we wanted to create, uh, we want to assign EC2 read-only access to S3. So it does is you select the EC2, click next permission. Uh, now here uh, you can either create a policy or use the one which is existing. So what I'm gonna do is uh, we want to uh, grant the S3 read only access. So look for the S3 policy here. And then uh, you can also expand and actually see the JSON content on what it is allowed. So let's select this one, hit next. Uh, these tags are optional and actually this is one of the cool feature which was recently introduced uh, by AWS, I guess in reInvent, uh, but uh, you don't have to worry about right now. Um, but you can, of course, I would highly recommend to learn more uh, how this actually works. Now let's review everything and uh, we'll name the role and we'll say EC2 access Okay, we can't. EC2 access to S3, right? And here we'll say this allows EC2 to access S3 as a read only. All right, everything uh, looks perfect as a read only role. And once you hit the create role, uh, the role will be created and uh, will be shown here. Um, so I already have multiple roles here. So whenever you're creating a next EC2 instance, for example, once the role is created, you can tie this role to that particular instance and it will be straightforward. Now uh, we'll also talk about the another AWS account, but let's go back to our presentation first and uh, let me give you some brief introduction on all these three and then we will uh, show you some little demo here as well. Um, okay, so we talked about the AWS services, now other uses. So here you can say there's a cross account access. Uh, imagine you have production and the non-production environment within the AWS and for some reason, uh, uh, non-production person or the user need access to the production account as well. So you can 
granted access using the cross account access um, uh, that we saw in the console as well so there are multiple uh, federation and the access control that you can do now another option that you have uh, for access control is the identity federation so here the user assumes the identity provider access role example active directory sso fb google amazon etc um, the third option is the SSO using SAML 2.0. Uh, now, this is uh, mostly suitable for the enterprise environment with the existing Active Directory system. So, what you have to do is you can pretty much, uh, the user does not have to create the account on the AWS. They can just, uh, AWS simply inherits the role or the access control from the Active Directory and authentic authenticates the user. And the other one is and the last one is SSO without using the SAML. So this is allows for a Windows Store relationship to be built between an optimized Microsoft Active Directory and your AWS Microsoft Active Directory in the cloud. So that's again an option. Now let's go back to our console. So you can see here, I'm not gonna create this, but uh, as you can see here, another AWS account. So here you can just simply uh, give the account ID of the um, in our example, let's say there is a non-production account and uh, someone needs the access to the production account, then you just type the account ID here and that person will have access to it. Now, there are a uh, couple options like uh, it requires uh, external ID based when third party will assume this role, right? So you can do that and of course require multi-factor authentication, which we talked about in the previous videos as well. Uh, web identity, uh, as you can see here, uh, there are um, uh, options like Facebook, Google, and, and you would have mostly seen that not just on mobile phones, but also on the applications where it says login with Google, login with Facebook, login with, uh, you know, LinkedIn or something. So uh, this is this works uh, the way because uh, the identity verification or federation will be done by this uh, provider and you'll be locked in uh, by authenticating uh, any of this site. Now, Amazon Cognito is also one of the uh, good service. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys have uh, really uh, saw that. So let me, let's quickly see Cognito. Uh, so here you can manage the user pools or manage identity pools. Uh, okay, for some reason, uh, it looks like I do not have access to it. But yeah, yeah once you go through that, you will be able to uh, see that, how you can create, like, you know, how you can um, uh, choose the Facebook or Google or LinkedIn or, or any of that. And the last one uh, that we talked about was the SAML 2.0, SAML. Uh, here you can uh, see uh, whether you're using Active Directory, you provide like you know the actual uh, uh, configuration of your uh, enterprise active directory account and and you uh, provide that information here you can annex the permission and you can create the roles instead of uh, going through and creating user accounts for each of them which is the way most of the people are doing it this these days so if you are a, a company with like you know 2000 3000 employees you are not going to sit and create access for individual, rather you would just inherit the permission that you have uh, or the accounts you have from the Active Directory. That's how it's gonna work. All right, uh, let's go back here. So uh, these are the options of the IAM roles. And uh, again, as I said, like, you know, I would highly recommend that you guys should definitely uh, create a free account or, or free tier account within the AWS so you can uh, do all uh, all the uh, trial and error things as long as you are not hosting a big application which would going to generate a lot of traffic or you're not going to store a huge files more than five gigs or something you should not be get charged and I think for learning purposes we are not going to generate any traffic anyway uh, so yeah, go ahead and, and do that uh, again. Uh, this is uh, end of the year. So I'll definitely see you guys uh, next year next week and uh, uh, Hope you have good Christmas and, and new year uh, Have fun. Thank you uh, for your support and subscribe 
again uh, so far uh, let me know if there are any questions comments i uh, will uh, try my best to answer those uh, and again uh, thanks for your time i'll see you guys next week